Hello everyone, I am Yatish Kuril, founder of Yatish Management Show. I welcome all. Uh, in this show, I met distinguished faculties, successful entrepreneurs and experts from the industry who speak on the best practices of the company used in the companies, ideas, innovations, research and insight for small medium enterprises and family managed businesses. Uh, today I welcome my, our guest uh, Bridget O. Michael. I hope I am pronouncing the name properly. <laughs> yes, you did a great job with okay. that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, before beginning, I would like to welcome uh, Bridget. And uh, can you let us know about yourself and uh, from where you are you coming and right now, where are you right now? Can you tell us because we are in different other part of the world? I know, absolutely. I, I was really uh, thrilled when um, Yatish told me that his time zone right now is 11 p.m. and mine is almost 11 a.m. It's actually 10 42 a.m. right now. I'm in Seattle, Washington State. And he's already told you my name is Bridget O. Michaels. I am super excited to be here today with all of you. And uh, a little bit about me. I don't like talking about me, but I'm just going to say a little bit about me. Yes, I was born in Nigeria, in West Africa. And, um, you know, I started my career in the banking industry where I moved quickly to the United Kingdom and straight into the public sector in the local government. And from there, I moved again to the United States in 2013. But in spite of all of this, I've always had a very great passion to empower people, to educate people, to, you know, guide people to, towards whatever it is that their life's purpose and goals are. And that quickly saw me becoming a leadership coach with the John Maxwell leadership team. I still wasn't satisfied because of my love and passion for people. I also became a certified life mastery consultant at the Brave Thinking Masters. Now, I join all of that to empower and equip people for the betterment of their good. Thank you again, Satish, for having me here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think so you're more, uh, you're practicing also about uh, diversity and inclusion. So today, I in this show today, I would like to know about that. Uh, what is exactly diversity and inclusion and uh, why we need both? And uh, uh, what is like it is really about it? So I we just want to know more about it. Like. Okay. Thank you so much for, again, for having me here. And today we're talking about diversity and inclusion. And of course, I, I didn't say in my intro that I am a certified diversity, inclusion and equity um, facilitator. So um, stay glued. You will want to know a lot about, you know, what you're talking about today. Okay. So there are a lot of things that are going on out there in the world today. I, I really want you to take a good look at, um, you know, how the world is today. What are we talking about? If you turn on the news, if you turn on, if you go on to the um, social media, what do you see? What do you hear? Apart from every other thing that I believe that the most frequently read or talk about topic for today is always diversity and inclusion. See, most people think that implementing in initiatives like diversity and inclusion is a costly business. But I want you to know today, it costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time, and that's it. Interestingly though, I want you to understand that the cost associated with diversity and inclusion is not in implementation of it. The cost is actually in not in your, your not implementing it. In fact, if you have an organization today and you don't have a diversity and inclusion initiative, you are really shooting yourself in the foot as an organization. Really, you are. So I want you to, to pay serious attention to what we are going to be talking about today on diversity. Because if you look at the workforce today, the workforce constitute of people from diverse background. And then you have policies and you know 
processes that do not even include those people from various background in your policies? And how do you successfully empower or grow that organization or the employees in those organizations if you don't even know, know anything about them or you don't even take their culture and their background into consideration? There again, there's another kind of organization that the people that the organization serves, it's not represented in the, in the workforce. You walk into an organization, you just see only a certain color of people in that organization. And meanwhile, there are diverse people in the community. And then you wonder, does it mean that the people in that community, they don't have what it takes to be in those organizations? That's one thing that always comes up in, in discussions. Even though it's not an easy topic to talk about, I always say it's the elephant in the room, but we must talk about diversity and inclusion from now on. We cannot escape from it. And in this few minutes that I have to share with you, I'm going to talk to you about, you know, what you stand to gain. Because for many years, we are hearing all, all the laws being passed, the law of equal pay, the, the civil rights, the age discrimination, the U.S., equal opportunities, rehabilitation, all sorts of laws being passed. But I want you to know, just like I said before, the hottest topic in the news today and the conversation that are ongoing, besides the COVID-19 and the vaccination, diversity and inclusion is receiving sustained global attention. So you ought to pay attention to it if you are an employer of labor. What, what we're really talking about today is some of those protected classes are protected by law, but inclusion is really about everyone being included in it. So apart from the fact that you have a diverse in, uh, organization, but you want everybody that is in the organization to be included in the policy and the formation of whatever it is that you are doing. And that's what is the right thing to do. That is the right thing to do. So when you look at data today and you look at diverse and inclusive culture, you want to pr project a culture or a, 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 an organization that is healthy to the world. I'm going to just take a brief scenario. So let's look at what I mean. Have you heard of the expression that says no one washes a rental car? You go to a rental, a rental car shop, you rent a car. Have you ever seen anyone who actually washes the rental car and returns it? I don't think, I, I haven't done it myself. I haven't really, I don't even remember to do that. I just go and return the keys and that's it and I go. You know why? You know why nobody washes a renter car, Yatish? Do you know why? Yeah, please. Uh, no. Do you know why no one washes a rental car? Because it is not on his own. Yes. Because there is no ownership. There is no buy-in. There is no skin in the game with a renter car. It's just a renter car, so you can use it and abuse it and return it. On one occasion, I have gone to rent a car and the car was so filthy on the, on the inside, but it was a brand new car. So I, I refused to take the car. I said, no, I don't want to take this car. And I said, oh, the, the owner abused it before, the, the, the renter before you abused it. I said, well, then you have to take care of it before you rent it to someone else. So what I'm saying basically is that you will not treat your own car the same way. It's a simple, it's a simple, simple matter because you have ownership in that car. Because if the car is your own, you know you have invested in the car, you love the car so much so, much so that you can even sleep in the car. Then you take, you take good care of the car. And this also translates to an organization and its workforce. And I want you to think about it from the employee's perspective. First of all, think about the employee. Do the employees of your organization feel connected? 
ask yourself that. Or when you go into your boardroom meetings, ask your leaders, do the employees in this workforce, do they feel connected? Do they feel invested? Do they feel that they, that they are part of the company? Even emotionally, not from even the equity and uh, perspective, do they feel that like they belong? These are the questions that each employer, no matter how small your business is, should be looking to answer. And if you cannot answer these questions truthfully, then you need to get a facilitator to come run a training for you on diversity and equity. I'm telling you the truth. So now you ask, so is this company just a rental to the employees? That's what you ask because that's how they feel. They just come in, you know, it's not my business. I just do whatever I like, you know, and then they go. But it's rubbing off. That attitude is rubbing off on the organization at the end of the day, especially if you are a for-profit business. But if you flip the attitude of the staff, you know, around, your turnover will have you singing to the bank. But a lot of people don't know this. Sadly to say, a lot of organization still falls behind when it comes to including their employee in the culture of the organization. Now, what about the perspective of the company? So are these employees just renters to them? I mean, to the, to, the, to the company, the owners of the company, is that how you feel you treat your employees that, oh, they're just rentals? Is there a feeling of belonging? This is really worth thinking about, honestly. It's really worth thinking about. So let me ask a question to the audience. If you are an employee of a company, if you see your employees as a renter, does it make any difference to what you do each day at work? That is, assuming you are an employee and every day you come to work, you feel like as if you are just a rental. You just, mm. would that make a difference to what you do each day at work? You already know the answer. Let's say you started a new company with six, you know, you know, in and six months, uh, you know, old, and you put so much effort into the job. And you get paid by your employer, and your, your employer, you get paid all the all, all time, you know, and it tells you, okay, you have to come to work at 8 a.m., you finish to work at 4 to 4 30 or 5 p.m. You get paid, of course. And then your employer says, okay, you know what? I want you to come sit at our meetings and give your own feedback or your, or, or your own contributions to what we do, the, the culture of the organization. Or another employee that comes in and in six months, you know, once they, they, they pass their probation, their empl the employee says, you know what? You're just a renter car, just stay there, come do your work and that's it. You don't, we don't care what... Whether, whether you have anything to say or not, we don't care about that, that's your work. Which of these two employees do you think will feel like they truly belong in the organization and they'll give you the value that they need? Well, if you see it as a renter, you start doing a little more at first. Why am I using rental? Because that's the simplest way that I can explain away diversity and inclusion to you and you'll get it especially inclusion because if on the average at least 10 out of a, out of 50 people or 5 out of 10 people will always rent a car in their lifetime and even if you have not rented a car before at least you understand what it means or maybe you've rented something before.
And what if you didn't see it as a rental? What if you didn't see, you know, you're coming to work, working in an organization as a rental? What if you felt like you truly belong there? That you're part of something that is really great, something you believe in, that you can make a difference in that organization as an employee? What if that's how your boss makes you feel? What if that's what your boss makes you feel? But well, sadly enough, a lot of organizations and its leaders do not treat their employees with that. They do, they do not give them a free hand. They do not even make them feel that they belong. Therefore, there is no commitment from the staff. And you wonder, why are they not performing? You wonder why are they not performing? So there's there is a there's a there's an under, underneath line, and I want you really to start looking at all of these things because all the lawsuits that we hear in the, in this part of the world will have been averted if these have been taken into consideration. Do you know what it cost? What a lawsuit cost for each um organization when a, a an employee sues here in the US it's about forty thousand dollars that's the cost to the organization if an employee sues for discrimination on that this yeah so the best way for us to you know avoid this kind of situation is have an organization that actually incorporates both diversity, not just looking at people as if they're just a thing or a number, but you also, you include them in whatever it is that you do. I'll tell you a story. I once went for an interview and um, I got to the interview and I sat down and um, the air around me was strange, but I didn't know why. But when I walked into the room, in, in room, I saw a panel containing of five people, five people sitting in front of the panel. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was strange to say that all the five people were male, that's one, and they were all Caucasian. They are going to interview me, a woman, and a woman of color. I was very uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable. But you know what? I sat down and I smiled my way through how they interview until they asked me the question. So this is a, this is a diversity and, in, and inclusion role. Tell us what you know about diversity and inclusion. Wow. Talk about asking the wrong question, right? But that was really good. So I asked them the question first. I said, do you actually want me to tell you what diversity and inclusion really is? Or do you want me to paint it for you? Or do you want me to play it by your book? I could see that they, they had this expression on their face. What is she talking about? And I said, and I told them right there, I said, you see this interview panel? This is exactly what diversity and inclusion is not. And I knew I wasn't going to get the job right there and then, but I didn't care. I just had to say it. And I told them, I said, look, diversity, I, I walked, I told them right from, the, from my entrance and I walked into the door of this organization, I didn't see any other people of color. The only one person of color that I saw Guess what? It was the security guard. It was the janitor. That was the only person. And he kind of looked at me like, what are you doing here? That was the way he looked at me. And then he said, I wish you the best of luck. I didn't know why he said that. But when I got to the interview panel, I, I understood that. And I'm like, wow, in this day and age in the, in the United States, we still have all of this kind of thing. I couldn't believe it myself, Yatish. But it's true. You see how a lot of organizations are there that are like that. And then they, 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 they lean back on their chair and they ask me to tell them what diversity and inclusion is. Really? Does it mean there were no other people in the community that were good enough? 
to also be in that panel. Does it mean that there were no other uh, uh, people of color that could at least come and join the interview panel to interview me? It gave me straight an impression of what I was getting into. And I'm, I'm really grateful that I never got that job then. That was a couple of years ago, 2014, and I'm grateful I didn't get it. So I can imagine if I, as a stranger, walk into a building, I'm going to be interviewed, and I had that uh, feeling of being unwelcomed, how much more the staff that works there, they will never be happy coming to work each day. And you know when they're not happy? There's no production, there's no productivity. They just give you whatever they can and they just walk away. So how do we lose this rental mentality and foster an I'm all in mentality? That's the question that I, I want you know, to share with you today. How do we do this? What we are really asking is, what does it take to get someone to care? Because people just want you, they just, they just want to, to be heard. They want to, to know that you first of all care about them before you reel out all your policies and process to them. Because at the end of the day, people are still people all over the world. It's the same character, the same thing. People are still people. And they just want one thing. First, tell me you care. But most time you walk into an organization, they throw away the care. Oh, all you get is, we're just here to do a job. Just do it. That's all you hear. And that's wrong. That's wrong. And for all that, we really need to understand what people care about, don't we? We need to understand what is important to them. For people to feel a sense of belonging, then they need to feel like they are included in the company culture, accepted for who they are, and that they are valued for their gifts. Because Yatish, whether we like it or not, I want to say it here. Every human being on earth has a valuable gift to offer. There is no bad idea or no wrong idea. Everyone has something to bring to the table. There's a, there's, there's a quote that I've always um, loved, which says that if you are not invited to the table, bring your own folding chair. I posted that on my um, LinkedIn page once. One, one, one. Yeah, everybody want, wants to be invited to the table. Everybody wants to be valuable. Everybody wants to be treated with value. They want to believe in what the company stands for and what it will not stand for. And they need to see what the organization wants for all of the employees, not just for them, but for all of their co-workers too. So you cannot go and treat Mr. A right, give him all the benefits and put him in a position why Miss B is suffering and they are both doing the same job. Perhaps Miss B even does a better job than Mr. A. But for the fact that Mr. Miss B is, 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 is different, you, you, or you categorize Miss B as different because Miss B doesn't see themselves as different. You put them in a box. So why do you still do that? If people feel included and their colleagues are included too, then they are engaged better. And if they are engaged, guess what? They become committed. But if they feel in any way excluded, they actively disengage. And then they have quit mentally at least. That's why people quit because of people. And when an employee has quit mentally, even though they still turn up every day, they just want to do the bare minimum. And the company, of course, keeps paying them. It does, it does. And when they are ready, they just leave. They just leave. That's such a perpetual challenge for corporations around the world. That's a great deal of research has been done in this area, which is engagement. Engagement has increasingly been a buzzword in large corporations over the last 20 years because the opportunity is so vast for companies that can get it right. Hmm. But sadly, 
few get still get it right. They do. Do you know that according to research, in the next five year or so, 75% of the workforce is going to be made up of millennials. You know that? So now, as an employer of labor, or as a business owner, or as a small business owner, I want you to ask yourself, how many millennials do you have in your organization right now? Do you know? And another thing you must also know, millennials are not like us. They are looking for something different to the boomers. Different things are important to millennials. Millennials care about different things. I want you to, can you just guess what is important to them? <laughs> Diversity and inclusion. That's the only thing that is important to them. This is a, a different generation. Oh, this is a, all, the, all, the, all the youths that are born in, in, in the millennium. This is how they think. Just interview one of them and you see. And maybe you have one in your home right now. So you already know what I mean. I've got my kids. They, oh, they think differently from me. They work differently from me. Their ideas are so different that I'm amazed. I'm like, what? Really? This is how you? Yes. But they, exactly. But that's how they think. That's how they think. Understanding this today leads to competitive advantage, but not understanding this tomorrow is going to lead to a commercial collapse. You don't want that for your organization. You don't. It's difficult enough to find great people today. I tell you, it is. Oh, <laughs> some organizations just think that it's just easy. With a flick of the finger, they'll just get the right people. How do you know that that's the right person when you haven't even tested them or they haven't even come into your organization to witness the kind of culture that you project? So you don't, you don't know if they're going to stay after one month. I've seen employees quit after the first one week of getting a job. I've seen employees just, you know what, run off after two, two months of just being in a, in, a, in a job. I tell you, I've seen it. I've seen a young, a, you know, a lady who, you know, came in, into a place of work with me sometime, long time ago. And after six months, she told me, I'm going back to my previous organization. Wow. I said, why? Why your previous one? Where, where you came from? He said, because they treated me better. They care about me. Wow. That was a big lesson. That was many years ago. So it's difficult enough to find great people today. So imagine how much harder it would be if 75% of the pool you can recruit from, from whatever, wherever it is you recruit from doesn't want to work for an organization like yours. Think about it. They mention X, Y, Z company. Say, no, 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 no. I don't want to work there. So you start, you don't even ever, ever get the right people. So the little one you get, you are grateful. And it's not just the companies doing the recruiting that needs to wake up to diversity and inclusion. The best companies are already looking for people that fit a diverse and included culture. So employees and organization need each other to be a good fit. And increasingly, on either side of that sim symbiotic relationship, if you're not a good fit, you are ruling yourself out. So diversity and inclusion is a, is, is a good thing for the organization. It's good for the employees. It's good for everyone. So you see, it's a win-win situation. But I want to ask you again today, whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility? Who goes first? The employer or the employee? Who goes first? Do you know? All right, let's do another one. Do you know the film, you know, in the film Ford versus Ferrari? If you are into cars like me, I love, love cars. But if you have not watched it, I want you can go back and watch the movie. In the movie Ford versus Ferrari. I think it came out, was it 2019 or I'm not sure. Okay. One of the Ford bosses said to, to um to Matt uh, Damon, he says, find me a Ford type driver. Do you remember that? One of the Ford buses said, oh, find me, 
a Matt Damon's character. Find me a, a, a Ford type driver. Have you ever worked at a place where you were either or you were definitely not a gold man type of person? For example, they say, oh, she was definitely a Bank of America type of person. Or she's definitely a, a, a Disney way of doing things. Where does that feeling come from? Where does those things come from? Imagine you go to an organization and don't feel like you fit in for whatever reason. Just the, the way I felt when I just went for only an interview. Only an interview for a job that I, I long to did, do. But I didn't feel like I was going to fit in. So I didn't even bother. So when I really told them exactly what diversity and inclusion was in 2014, and of course I knew I wasn't going to get a job. What is it that creates that impression that makes people come in and they don't fit in into your organization? What is it? Is it your policy? Is it the culture? I don't think it's the official letter that you receive from the company that makes you feel that you are welcome in that company. I don't think so. Is it that letter that says, oh, you're not the well, you're not the right type of person for this organization? Or is it probably something the people of the organization said or did or didn't say or do? When we talk about a culture of diversity and inclusion, what exactly do we mean? What do, what do we mean? Because now I think it's overused, yet it's, it's overused all over the media, all over everywhere. I ask again, what is culture? The benefits of a diversity and inclusion program is bringing about a benefit, beneficial change. But change in an organization is really cultural change, isn't it? Not just a, a group habit. It is the custom and practice, the habits, the processes, the procedures of the people of that organization. So it's not just the, not just the habit. So look again into your processes, into your procedures. And it's also the perception, the way, you know, the people in your organization see the world, the beliefs, the values. Think about it. If the, if, if the CEO of, of um, your organization, you know, types up some new values, he, he just wake up one morning and feels good about himself, and he just types up a new set of values and go pin it on, on the wall. You know that the, the, your, your colleagues or your staff will know that you actually put up a new value or whatever it is on the wall. But I bet you, Part of those employees would never look at that board to see what it is you put on the wall. It could be your New Year's re resolution. You wake up and say, oh, this is the new culture. This is not how we're going to do things. But many of your employees, they are not actually going to look at it. Even though a part of you decides you are going to change everything in January, and for three days, that part of you control and stick to your plan, just like as the, as the boss would do, he will only do that for three days and that's it and he forgets about it. And, and everybody loses concentration again and fall back to normal. Because you did not carry the employee along when you were making that decision. This is why change is complicated. It's complicated for the individual, it's also complicated for the organization. So when you think about it this way, it's easy that everyone plays a role in change. The organization, the management, the staff, everyone. Because that is how it's gonna work. Don't just think it's only you, you the boss, you just wake up, change plans, put it on the wall, and then send email out and get people to go, go watch or read what some, some stuff that you put out there in the world. Nobody's gonna take you seriously. So the question we can ask ourselves all the time is, what can I do to make the organization better? 
what can I do? The truth is we all need each other, Yatish. We all do need each other. But people don't think again. They don't even believe that. It has always been together we are stronger. Together we are better. And it's together that we win. It has always been that way and it will never change. So each and every one of you have a part to play. Not just your boss, but every one of you. So think about it now. What can you do? Can you be a bit more understanding of the people around you? Can you be a little bit tolerant of people around you? When somebody is having a conversation with you, can you please take away your, your mindset or, 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 or the, the, the conversation you're having in your head about that person? Can you just put it off for a minute? When somebody is asking you for, for um, something, they come to your desk at work and they're asking, hey, can I pick your brain? Can I ask you a question? Can you take a moment to take your eyes off your email that you're busy or you pretend to be busy writing and actually focus on that individual at that moment so that they will feel that they actually matter? Not firing away at your computer and the person is behind you talking to a, a, your, the back of your head. Can you do that? Can you do that? It's Friday. The the, the um, landscape is being uh, worked on. That's why you can hear the machine. I apologize for that. Can you take an interest in other people? Can you do that? Can you try to see the best in people rather than focusing on what you perceive is wrong with them? The culture of an organization is changed through the attitudes and actions of the individuals in that organization. So today, I employ you. I employ you. It's a high time. It's high time to change. So that you don't lose your valuable staff that you have. An idea for change is not change. It could be, it could probably should be something that you have to integrate into your policy. And it must start today. Let it start today. Because the people who have worked the longest in your organization, they have invested a portion of their life into that organization. And they are actually looking up to you. You, the CEO. You, the manager. You, the supervisor for a better way of doing things. If you pay attention enough, if you put your ears to the ground, if you come out from your high house and come to the level of the employee, you'll be able to understand what their needs are. I really hope, I really hope that you find this exciting. You find this very useful today. And that you will start to integrate these very good ideas into your organization from now on. Because everyone, everyone wants or deserves empathy. Everyone deserves an opportunity to be engaged. And it's time for you to be aware of those needs. If what I have said to you today makes sense and you want to go deeper into this, I can do this presentation, you know, with the slides and with scenarios and get a lot more engagement from the, you know, your company, your organization if you would let me. Thank you so much again to Yatish, to the host, 
who invited me all the way from Mumbai in India. I appreciate yeah. you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. And it was a very good uh, insight was shared by you. And you were, I, I understood something new, came to know something new about diverse, diversity and inclusion. I just, uh, I have chosen one of the video which is linked with your uh, topic. So just, just let me play it. It's just a five minutes video in diversity and inclusion to be remain open like that. Okay. Thank you. So is there any, any question for me? Does it, the audience have any question? Only one uh, one person is online, but he's not asking anything. Okay, okay, that's fine. I uh, I will be I will be looking into it. Uh, if there's anyone that said make a comment or ask a question, I can come back and respond to their questions. Yeah. I will be premiering shortly, so you can uh, somebody can uh, put up comments. And then uh, I will pass on to you also. That's that's fine. Yeah, but I really want I really want you know the people to always understand that there is a cost. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Yeah, I just replied. There is a cost in not doing something, so you need yep. to do something about it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.
is beautiful. It was a beautiful video. I love that. Yeah, looking at this topic, I searched the good, nice video. I thought, uh, let me play. Yeah. I thought, let me play in your show. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> uh, so now I uh, end the show with uh, thanks to you. Thanks for coming to our show. And uh, hope in future we may get uh, remain connected and I can invite you to do some yeah. masters also in India because uh, there is a, so that uh, some of the people can learn from you like that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, diversity and inclusion is best taught in a group setting when, you know, you have people sit down and participate so that they can actually tell you what they think so that you can at least, that's, that. to me, I like an engaged audience because you, you'll be very surprised what people have been carrying in their hearts for so long in the workplace. It's very, very surprising. Well, yep. everyone should be treated equally, no matter what. Everybody should be given a different, you know, given treatment. They're given, given the same treatment and given the same opportunity to grow. Everyone. Thank you so much, Satish. <laughs>